Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is Sunday the 19th of June. Now if I really thought about it, I should have done this a day sooner, shouldn't I? On the anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo. But I was busy yesterday so I thought what we'd look at today is this is going to be a fairly quick one. I thought we'd look at my top five books on the Battle of Waterloo and the 100 Days campaign. So this is going to be a mixture of fiction and non-fiction and they've, I don't necessarily agree with all of the, the points put forward but I think there's something interesting in there for everyone. Now these aren't necessarily going to be in any particular order but the final one is going to absolutely be the one book that if you're only going to get one then that would be the one to get. So let's start off with a fiction uh, book and that is Sharp's Waterloo. Now anyone who is interested in the Napoleonic period I can't believe that they haven't read Sharp and if you haven't then Sharp's Waterloo is probably not the best one to start with if you've not seen the TV shows or read any of the books previously but it is very very good. It shows the the run-up to the battle and it's got a lot of the the sort of key points, things like the Duchess of Richmond's Ball. There's a little bit of Catrabra in there. There's not much Linny in there, but it is told from Richard Sharp's perspective. He also has the Dutch in there. Sharp becomes an ADC to the Prince of Orange, who <laughs> who does not come out of the novel particularly well. He's played by uh, Paul Bettany in the uh, in the TV show, but uh, a pre-famous Paul Bettany. But uh, yes, no, my first recommendation for a fiction a book about Waterloo is Sharp's Waterloo. I can already hear the groans <laughs> from here. So the second one I'm going to recommend is a non-fiction one, and it's the exact opposite. This one is going to be 1815, The Waterloo Campaign, colon, The German Victory, and that's by Peter Hofschroer. I've almost certainly said that name incorrectly, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's nothing new for me, is it? Now, with this one, it argues sort of from twofold, well, threefold, really, that the Hundred Days campaign, Waterloo in, in particular, was a victory of the Germanic troops. Now, when I say Germanic troops, what do I mean? Well, he argues that, and this is why I say it's three-pointed, really, that the Prussians were responsible for doing the lion's share of the work in the 100 days. Now, I'm not going to get into that debate here, but he makes a compelling argument. The Battle of Linny, of course, was a, a real slugging match, and that was between the Prussians and the French, and that really uh, made the Grand Armée, you know, it, it, it wore them down a little before they got to Waterloo. Of course, in the, the latter stages of the Battle of Waterloo, in the early afternoon, or well, mid-afternoon, the Prussians attacked from the flank, they attacked Place Noir. That caused Napoleon to have to redirect the Young Guard and took those out of the uh, the main fight on Mont Saint-Jean. So there's that aspect to it as well. So his main point is that the Prussians were a key factor, perhaps the, the largest military factor, in the victory of, over Napoleon. So the second part is of the German troops that fought as part of the British army. So you've got, of course, the famous KGL troops, the King's German Legion. And these guys were considered to be something of an elite group of units in the British army. Not only the uh, the KGL, but you've also, of course, got the Brunswickers under their, uh, their crown prince. So you've got different German... Uh, what's it? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say nations or formations but you've got different sort of german representatives shall we say and they're scattered across the british army in their own regiments and the third thing that he talks about are german troops who were part of british regiments there were a lot more of those than you might think so you know he he talks there about how the british regiments were brought up to strength with you know many German nationals in each. Obviously, it varied from unit to unit, but he talks about that being a an important part of the makeup of the Anglo-Dutch army during the uh, the Battle of Waterloo and the Hundred Days campaign. 
Okay, so for my third recommendation, this one is going to be the one of, of the first three. This is the one that I would recommend the most because it has a really nice symmetry, bringing together, not symmetry, that's not the right word. It brings together the fiction and non-fiction, and that is the memoir, the Journal of the Waterloo Campaign by Captain, although General when he wrote the book, General Mercer. Now, he was a officer in the 3rd Royal Horse Artillery, and those guys did a lot of work during the War Battle of Waterloo in particular. Some at Catrabar as well, not, nowhere near as much though. But uh, yes, his journal is absolutely superb. It's one of the best memoirs I've read of the Napoleonic Wars, and there's some really, really good ones. I mean, it's up there with General Marbo's recollections. It's really, really good. It's written in a very engaging style. It's almost written like fiction. It's not dry at all. It's a great, great book. I would really, really recommend if you want to get yourself a an account of the battle, a journal that focuses specifically on that, then absolutely I would go for the Journal of the Waterloo Campaign by General Mercer. So we're into the final two recommendations. And this one's a bit of an odd one. I'm I'm going to recommend Napoleon and Wellington by Andrew Roberts. Now, Andrew Roberts, he is a very populist historian, populist and popular historian. It must be said, he is an absolute Napoleon simp. I mean, he's worse, <laughs> he's worse than me. So read it from that perspective. He is very, very fond of the emperor. He's very, very fond of what France and Imperial France represented. So read it with that in mind. And even he begrudgingly has to give Wellington some credit for his uh, his victory at Waterloo. But no, it's, it's a great book. And particularly if you want to see things from the French perspective, it's quite good. Now, another, I'm going to put in a couple of honourable mentions here. One of them is Waterloo by Jacques Logie. Again, that's quite a good one for looking at it from the French perspective. I'm going to also uh, recommend the Osprey series on Waterloo. I think there's four or five books that they've done on Waterloo. Now, I was quite lucky. I managed to get a combined volume in a slipcase. They had it in the works, which is a discount bookshop we have here in the UK. I think I got it for a fiver. I mean, that was an absolute bargain. It may have even been a tenner. But even at £10, that's an absolute steal. So I would recommend that one as well. Another one which I would cautiously recommend is Bernard Cornwall's Waterloo. I thought it was okay. A lot of people really hated on it. I think a lot of that criticism was unfair. I think it was people who just don't like Bernard Cornwall. But uh, it did still have its issues as well. It certainly wasn't uh, perfect. And it wasn't as academically rigorous as perhaps a lot of people like their books. If you do want academic, then you can't go much. Uh, you you can't go wrong if you grab Paul Dawson's. Uh, I think it's Napoleon's Army at Waterloo book. That is, I mean, that is. If you want to know about how many horse nails, shoe nails, the twelfth Karazi has had, then that is the book for you. It, nothing goes into as much detail as Paul Dawson, and he's a friend of the channel. He's a very very nice guy, but um, yeah, no. If you want, um, if you want the specifics, if you want the minutiae of the Army of the North, the French Army that fought the Battle of Waterloo, the Hundred Days Campaign, then that is absolutely the book for you. It's superb. It's also full of illustrations. I mean, it's not full of illustrations. Well, I mean, it is full of illustrations, but there are several illustrations by Keith Rocco as well. Now, he is absolutely phenomenal. A great Napoleonic artist. His stuff is gorgeous. I've just got his Kickstarter uh, that he did of his artworks, and they are some of the best uh, I've seen in recent times. They're absolutely phenomenal. So that's the also rands. I'm also going to have one other also ran. Now, this is going to be a super rando one. And that is, if you can get hold of it, the Citadel Miniatures, the Games Workshop, Warhammer Historical, Waterloo. It's, <laughs> I've said this many, many, many times, a terrible set of rules, but it's a great, great book. Really nice. 
again so i've got some great drawings in there great illustrations it's just it's just really nice it's a it's a lovely book so that leads us to which book would i recommend on the battle of Waterloo? if you were only going to get one book on the hundred days campaign what would it be well there can really honestly only be one like like conor mcleod himself there can be only one and the one book that i would recommend that you get on the hundred days campaign is mark adkins the waterloo companion this has everything that all the other books i've mentioned today has in one volume it's absolutely amazing mark adkin of course he is a journalist uh, first and foremost so his style is incredibly readable it's got a lot of details in there it's, it doesn't go into the munitions that paul dawson does but it doesn't get bogged down in worrying how many uh, buttons this guy had in his pocket or whatever not nothing wrong with that if that's what you're after but for the general reader the waterloo companion is just detail driven enough to make it and uh, but without it sort of tipping over into being perhaps just a little bit too detailed so it's well written it's very readable it's got absolutely festooned with drawings paintings maps particularly the maps are very good photographs it's it's fully illustrated it is a coffee table book and it's not necessarily that cheap i've seen them to be honest i've seen them for sort of 15 20 quid and i've seen them for 60 70 quid and I, I you may have even managed to pick one up for less than uh, less than both of those prices but it's really really good I, I i there's not really a huge amount to say go out and get it you will not regret it if i had to criticize it in some way i would say that it plays it fairly safe it's not like for argument's sake uh Hofschroer's book that says i'm gonna gonna look at it at a completely new angle there's none of that in there it's fairly uh, fairly straightforward but no 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 it's if you particularly for a war gamer if you're looking at the 100 days campaign and you don't necessarily want to buy an entire library of books because i'm, I'm going to make a bold claim here i've got absolutely no scientific <laughs> i've got no scientific measure uh, to back this up so uh, there you go but i am going to say that the battle of waterloo is the most written about battle in history i reckon there has been more ink put on paper or digital ink on digital paper about the battle of waterloo than any other battle in history and I'm, I'm 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 nailing my colors to the mast i'm coming out and i'm saying it. i think that's true so for the battle of waterloo if you're only going to get one book because you don't want to have an endless library then mark adkins the waterloo companion is absolutely the one that i would go for there is a sister one the trafalgar camp companion it's very good it's nowhere near as good as the waterloo one it's a lot more difficult to do trafalgar i think than it is waterloo but uh no no, no. the waterloo one is absolutely superb would highly recommend and if that's uh if waterloo is your jam if the hundred days is what floats your boat then the waterloo companion is absolutely the one to go for well thank you very much for watching i hope you've had some recommendations in there uh, i as far as i'm aware they are all available on amazon the only one that i had a little difficulty finding was the hofschroer one but uh, i think that's available on kindle as well so it it certainly is out there uh, they're all fairly common books even the um the also mentioned but uh, yeah so there you go thank you very much for watching and i will be back with the live streams this wednesday we're carrying on with general yambon and his spanish troops so we'll be uh, we'll be going on with that and i hope to see you at six o'clock on wednesday for the live stream if not i'll catch you guys next weekend for another video hope you guys have had a great week and a great father's day and i'll see you next time